Hey guys, let's get more news from Steelers, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. JJ what makes his thoughts clear on criticized Steelers player. The Pittsburgh Steelers have surprised plenty of people by forging a 6-3 record, and in doing so, they not only have a real shot of making the playoffs, but of also perhaps finishing first in the AFC North. They have had their success the old-fashioned way, by winning with defense and playing conservatively on offense, which is generally how the franchise has won six Super Bowl championships dating back to its steel curtain days in the 1970s. This season, quarterback Kenny Pickett hasn't exactly been impressive, but he has done enough to get Pittsburgh to where they are right now. J.J. Watt said on The Pat McAfee Show that while Pickett has mostly only thrown short-distance passes to the side of the field, he hasn't thrown any interceptions in five games and that he has therefore gotten the job done. This past Sunday against the Green Bay Packers, he didn't throw any touchdown passes and completed only 14 of 23 pass attempts, but it was enough for a 23-19 win. On the season, Pickett, who was the number 20 pick in last year's draft, only has six touchdown passes and a 61.3% completion rate. In his defense, somewhat, he doesn't have a ton of reliable playmakers around him, while wide receiver George Pickens is having a solid season overall, he has struggled in his last two or three games, while some are disappointed with the play of third-year running back Najee Harris. Pickett and the Steelers will have the opportunity to make a big statement when they visit the rival Cleveland Browns this Sunday. Steelers' T.E. Pat Fryermuth returns to practice ahead of Week 11. Steelers' tight end Pat Fryermuth will return to practice today, but will remain on the reserve-slash-injured list, the team announced. The team will have 21 days to activate the former second-round pick to the active roster, or he will miss the rest of the 2023 season. Fryermuth hasn't played since week four because of a hamstring injury. After making an attempt to return after the team's week six bye and re-aggravating the injury, the Steelers elected to place him on injured reserve. He caught just eight passes for 53 yards and two touchdowns before suffering the injury, averaging a career-low 3.25 targets per game in his third NFL season. Though Fryermuth's return is a huge win for the offense in general, his sporadic usage will need to become more consistent to make his presence truly felt. He's been one of the best receiving tight ends in the league since drafted in 2021, ranked sixth among all tight ends with 1.68 yards per route run in 2022, totaling 732 receiving yards and two touchdowns in his sophomore season. A big contributor toward his lack of usage would seem to be Pickett's avoidance of the middle of the field in general. Among quarterbacks with 200-plus pass attempts this season, he ranks dead last in pass attempts, targets and completions on targets to the middle of the field. So far this season, Pickett has averaged the eighth-lowest tight end target rate in the league 15.8%, though it's not necessarily due to Fryermuth's absence. In fact, in weeks 1-4 with Fryermuth active, Pickett targeted the tight end position on just 15.7% of passes, a slightly lower rate. Considering the stagnant pass attack Pittsburgh has been deploying on a weekly basis, it would serve them well to get Fryermuth more heavily involved at the point of his return. Should the Steelers sign Brian Burns from the Panthers in free agency? Steelers had an intermediate performance this season. This begs the question, what is Steelers missing? Combining the need for a proven pass rusher, according to over-the-cap projections, Carolina Panthers edge rusher Brian Burns' impending contract status could be something to watch closely. Burns has five sacks this season after posting 12.5 in 2022, and his 27.3% pass rush win rate would rank third in the NFL if he were to qualify, writes ESPN in a recent article ranking the upcoming free agency class. He is also entering his best years of play. Burns has high-speed traits, including speed, explosive power and lower body flexibility to consistently create disruptions in the pocket. Burns, 25, has yet to sign a long-term extension with the Panthers despite being one of their star players defensively. Since being drafted in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the former Florida State Seminole has quickly become one of the best young edge rushers in the league, totaling 42 sacks in 70 games since entering the league as a first-round pick. If that's not impressive, perhaps he generated 68 total pressures last season, which ranked him ninth best among edge rushers, according to Pro Football Focus, and converting them into 10 sacks is. So far this season, Burns has produced 10 hurries and 6 sacks in 8 games. 
if Burns hits free agency, he could become an ideal target for the Steelers. Brian Burns is an American football linebacker for the Carolina Panthers of the National Football League, NFL. He played college football at Florida State and was drafted by the Panthers in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft. Burns attended American Heritage School, where he played high school football. Over his junior and senior seasons, he had 135 tackles and 28 sacks combined and helped his team win state titles. Burns played in the 2016 U.S. Army All-American Bowl. He committed to Florida State University to play college football. As a freshman at Florida State in 2016, Burns played in all 13 games and led all freshmen in the country with 8.5 sacks. As a sophomore in 2017, he started all 13 games and had 48 tackles and 4.5 sacks. As a junior in 2018, Burns started all 12 games, recording 52 tackles and 10 sacks. After the season, Burns decided to forego his senior year and enter the 2019 NFL Draft. Burns was drafted by the Carolina Panthers in the first round with the 16th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. In Week 5 against the Jacksonville Jaguars, Burns recorded a sack on Gardner Minshew and returned a forced fumble for a touchdown in the 34-27 win. As a rookie, he appeared in 16 games and started 5. He finished with 7.5 sacks, 25 total tackles, and one forced fumble. In Week 3 against the Los Angeles Chargers, Burns recorded his first sack of the season on Justin Herbert, a strip sack that was recovered by the Panthers, during the 21-16 win. In Week 7 against the New Orleans Saints, Burns recorded a strip sack on Drew Brees that was recovered by the Panthers during the 27-24 loss. In Week 11 against the Detroit Lions, Burns recorded two sacks on Matthew Stafford during a shutout win and was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He appeared in 15 games and started 14 in the 2020 season. He finished with nine sacks, 58 total tackles, four passes defended, and three forced fumbles. On December 27, Burns was placed on the Panthers' COVID-19 reserve list. In the 2021 season, he appeared in all 17 games and started 16. He finished with nine sacks, 50 total tackles, four passes defended, and two forced fumbles. He earned Pro Bowl honors for the 2021 season. He was ranked 76th by his fellow players on the NFL Top 100 Players of 2022. The Panthers picked up the fifth-year option on Burns' contract on April 26, 2022. In Week 12 against the Denver Broncos, Burns had two sacks on Russell Wilson, a forced fumble, and one pass deflection, earning him NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He finished the 2022 season with 12.5 sacks, 63 total tackles, three passes defended, and one forced fumble in 16 games and starts. He earned Pro Bowl honors for the 2022 season. He was ranked 54th by his fellow players on the NFL Top 100 Players of 2023. And you fan, what do you think of the Brian Burns situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.